All right, you're all set, Mayor. Thank you, Sarah. Um, we'll call the meeting to order. And this is a workshop. Um, we're sorry that we're late. And I'm going to turn it over to our city manager, Rebecca Flurry, and we will have public comment at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Benke and commissioners for being here this evening. This is part two of our priority based budgeting community results and definitions workshops. I'm excited um, to again bring back the priority based budgeting or the resource X team. I'm so used to calling you the PBB team. I'm sorry, the resource X team, um, Chris Fabian, Bradley Stecker and Eric Keck. They're going to do most of the talking tonight, um, but I just wanted to say uh, great work in workshop number one, uh, helping us define those definitions going forward. Um, and then we'll do a little recap or the resource X team will do a little recap and then we'll do a definitions discussion. But I also need to make sure that cl the clerk, Vicki Hauser, takes the role, please, before we begin the presentation. I was just emailing you that for that, for that. Um, Mayor Banky. You're on mute. Mayor Benke, you are on mute. There you go. There, I'm here now. Sorry. That's okay. Um, and where are you calling I can from? Give them yep. Calling from downtown Battle Creek, Michigan. Vice Mayor Ferris. Present, attending from Battle Creek, Michigan. Commissioner Blood. Commissioner Blood. Commissioner Herring. Here from Battle Creek, Michigan. Commissioner Lance. Sorry. Commissioner Morris. Here from Battle Creek, Michigan. Commissioner Reynolds. Present attending remotely from Battle Creek, Michigan, Calhoun County. Commissioner Sophia. Present attending remotely from Battle Creek, Michigan. And Commissioner Zenda Wilson. Present, attending remotely from Battle Creek, Michigan. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki, appreciate that. Uh, so I am going to turn it right over to, I believe, Chris Fabian first. So thanks, Chris, take it away. That sounds great. Oh, one request, um, it's, I am attempting to share my screen and I get host disabled participant screen sharing this go around. You're all set, sorry, Chris, I just turned it on. No problem. Here we go. Um, and I will get myself situated here, share my screen. I'm moving the Brady Bunch boxes to a second screen so I can watch you all. And I am also going to open the chat in case anybody had anything additional to say. All right, it's good to talk those things out loud. Also awkward, but less awkward than just silence as I'm just maneuvering the technology around. Um, thank you, everyone, and welcome to the second workshop. Um, this is, as a reminder, this is the uh, priority-based budgeting workshop where we are focused on results and result definitions. Um, I'm going to start with a quick recap of what we did the last time, just to jog everybody's memory. Um, and at any time during today's presentation, if, if you want to recall or remember how do these results fit into the bigger picture of priority-based budgeting, uh, we can go into that. But as a quick reminder, the results and the definitions um, form the answer to the question, why do we exist in priority-based budgeting? And the reason that they're so important is because the city's programs get evaluated relative to these results as they are defined. Uh, so if you think about the remainder of priority-based budgeting, departments will, will evaluate their own program inventories and they'll be looking at these results uh, as we will define them tonight. And as they're trying to communicate to you whether or not they believe that their programs influence any one or multiple result areas, um, the, the definitions that we agree upon tonight provide a common language. Uh, it allows the departments to say, um, I understand how these results are defined. Therefore, if I'm trying to persuade you that my program has a high degree of influence on this result, 
I have to use the definitions that we land on tonight. Uh, so they are, they're a roadmap, if you will, um, a, and a communication mechanism as much as anything else. And this is really one of the coolest parts of um, elected officials role and citizens role in priority based budgeting, because citizens gave you all gave us all uh, their input on how results might be defined. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, one of our other objectives for today, uh, while citizens were given a, a, a number, a diverse range of possible result definitions to consider, uh, just like last time, our job tonight is going to be to try to get focused, uh, it, meaning we want to land on a sweet spot of result definitions for each of the result areas because it makes the process easier. It makes the process easier for scoring from the department point of view. Um, and understanding from, from your perspective uh, that these results aren't defined by you know, a, a great many uh, number of definitions, but something that's very specific and the highest priorities in Battle Creek. So uh, again, as a reminder, my name is Chris, and along with me on the team is Eric, Eric Keck, uh, and Brad Steckert. Eric's calling in from Idaho, and Brad Steckert's calling in from Wisconsin, and I'm in Denver, Colorado. Uh, so without further ado, we'll jump right in. Um, so if you remember, this is, this is one of the slides we used last time. When we started the discussion of results, uh, Jessica gave us an overview of the survey that took place and you had a whole host of results. And our, our goal was to try to get down to six to eight primary uh, results overall. Um, and we explained that uh, anything over eight tends to create redundancy among the result areas. Uh, it can be taxing for, from a process perspective on departments um, and, and kind of uh, we wanted to get nothing more than eight if we possibly could from a community results perspective. And I just used a term that I remember I need to explain. There are two different types of results and one is community oriented, which helps us understand the results that matter most to citizens. They are, um, helping us to evaluate programs that are offered directly to the citizens and residents of Battle Creek, whereas we also have an internal result called governance that helps us understand how we're going to evaluate our internal programs and both the community facing programs and your internal governance programs get evaluated against the results that uh, are most relevant to them. And anything less than six results, we said um, that can often lead to a lack of enough evaluation criteria to properly differentiate any of the programs that you provide. So we wanted to take all of the results that were on the table uh, and, and try to focus them. And as Rebecca mentioned, you did a great job uh, the first go around. So we ended up from a primary results perspective of the following, I'll, I'll read them out loud. We had economy, safety, utilities, recreation, transportation, and then a, a combined set of, of results for environment, physical appearance, and community design. That, um, those make up your six community-oriented results. And then we had that internal uh, result for governance. And we're going to be talking about the definitions for each of these uh, primary result areas uh, throughout the rest of our workshop today. In addition, there were other um, er, uh, result areas that were tested in your survey that, that received appreciation and support. Um, and our goal today was to be mindful of how they um, may fit in to any of your other results when it comes to the definitions themselves. But when it came to education, for example, uh, the, the feeling was education is really important. But if you remember our test about, is it, is it an end result in and of itself? That is what a result is all about or is it a means to an end? Um, our uh, takeaway from workshop one was that education was more a means to an end, meaning that these were the end goals you're looking to achieve and education might be your support of the schools. In other words, might be a way to help you achieve some of these primary results. Uh, arts and culture um, had a similar outcome because it had less overall support from a uh, um, percentage basis compared to every other one of the result areas. And then finally, diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
I'll tell you right off the bat that we have a recommendation at the very end of this presentation for including diversity, equity, and inclusion as another one of the scoring criteria uh, that we call a basic program attribute. And we'll explain that in the final slide when we get to a wrap up. Um, our basic program attributes are a companion set of scoring criteria in addition to results uh, that tackle things like degree of mandate for a program or population served um, and the extent to which programs are provided in a way that addresses uh, the diversity, equity, and inclusion of your residents it will be better served if we include it as a basic program attribute. But we'll talk about it uh, and have the chance to discuss in our wrap up. But for the task at hand, we're going to jump into the results definition discussion. Um, and kind of like the last time, I bet my guess is that the very first result area uh, will create the most, um, you'll get used to the exercise that we're going through, but then we'll repeat the same exercise and the same uh, tests for every one of the results. And uh, it'll become a little bit more streamlined as we go. One of my jobs tonight is to be a good facilitator. Um, so I've got Brad and Eric to uh, try to keep me in line. Um, and also our, our Battle Creek team, uh, Rebecca, Jessica, Ted, uh, Linda, um, if I, my job is to stay focused and use the time that we have to try to make sure we get through all of the result areas, all of the definitions, um, and achieve a successful outcome, which is to have, as best as possible, agreed upon result definitions for each one of your results, because our hope is that we're going to be able to commemorate uh, the final results and definitions so that staff can use these for a number of, of applications or, or reasons, uh, not the least of which is your priority-based budgeting process, uh, which will roll out um, based on, on what we do here tonight. So I'm about to jump into the first exercise, if it's okay. Um, and if there is any other questions, I can take them now before diving right in. This is Vice Mayor Ferris and I do have a question. Um, okay. I, it was not my understanding that we had agreed upon these results as the results that we would use going forward. I thought that that would be the first part of this meeting was to agree upon results. Um, I agree, I wasn't no under problem. that impression either. Okay, um, let's go back for just one moment. So in, in workshop one, and, and please let's, let's talk about it because this is a process that we're working through together. Uh, we, we took a large number of results and I can even pivot to the first set of slides from workshop one if you think that would at all be helpful. Um, and I, let me do that actually. Uh, and in the results discussion from workshop one, um, we walked through, I, I want to, so I, I just want to see if this jogs your memory a little bit, and if it doesn't, and you're still at a different understanding, then we should talk about it. Um, but Jessica had an opening presentation that discussed the, the full survey uh, that you went through. And from that survey, you actually had uh, up to 13 different possible result areas. It was a large number. And we set forth with workshop one, I'll make this brief, I promise you, uh, to, to land on six to eight final results that we could then move into the definition stage. Um, and one of the uh, approaches that we took um, was to consider several different tests. We had a, a standalone test, um, meaning does this result area stand on its own? And we um, had a, a little stopwatch and you um, took some time to reflect. And then we came back for some discussion overall. We had a second test, which was, is this an end in and of itself um, or just a means to an end? And similarly, we talked through, and this is how we landed on, is education really a, a, an end in and of itself in Battle Creek or is it a means to an end? And then the third test, we discussed a redundancy 
um, effort. And that's how we ended up being able to combine uh, recre, I'm sorry, environment, physical appearance, and community design. Um, our, our crack up slide, uh, which we laughed about, was I had said, well, originally we were going to either summarize your feedback or just go with 50% approach. Um, any of the result areas that had more than 50% was our backup plan. Uh, but we ended up summarizing our feedback. And that's how I got to the results that uh, we just landed on. I'll stop there and say back to the two questions that were asked. Is this familiar um, or is there anything that I can clarify or anything that you want to reconsider? No, I, I think that all of that is, is the way I remember it. I've, I've got all that in my notes and the combining of the several topics. I guess specifically the one that is not on the list that I'm concerned about is arts and culture. And I, I think that that had some support and still does have support as ending up in our final goals. Sure. Um, I'll tell you what I remember uh, discussing in the last meeting, but anything's possible. Um, in the last discussion, given the fact that it had 36% in the support category, uh, I, and we can go back to some more specific notes. There were def there was definitely feedback that some council members are, uh, were surprised, given your support for arts and culture, that it was at maybe a 36% um, support. And that's why our recommendation as we go through every one of the other results is to consider, can we still weave it into a definition? Are there any definitions that you would want to um, augment slightly or add to that discussion for arts and culture specifically, as well as education. And we even talked about it for diversity, equity, inclusion. Again, that was our hearing your feedback that those were definitely important in community engagement. I should say uh, any of these um, have that opportunity. Um, we have a specific recommendation on diversity, equity, inclusion as a basic program attribute. And our guidance for you would be to think of ways that arts and culture supports uh, your economy result, for example, uh, which we would go through in the definition discussion. And you would have the opportunity to say, can we add some language for arts and culture here that strengthens the definition and make sure that there's a link uh, or an infusion of arts and culture into that particular result? That would be fair game for today. I guess I'd like to hear from some of the other commissioners. Sure. Commissioner Moore. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Janaysia. Okay. Um, I was under the impression that this wasn't gonna be like our final, like when you said that you were gonna summarize it, I thought that we were like, it was still a working draft. So my question kind of is, is this final or do we have like some, changes that we can make here because I too feel that arts and culture um, should be on there. I did a lot of research on what I thought should be in the eight after that meeting that we last had and uh, my thoughts kind of changed a little bit since our last meeting. And this is Commissioner Herring. I, I want to know what we have to do to make sure arts and culture is in that top eight. Mm -hmm. This is Commissioner Sophia. Um, one of the, I, I talked to Rebecca about this briefly. I didn't bring it up at our last meeting, but my thought was that we could weave arts and culture into recreation. I think that we use our, our recreational facilities frequently to um, host some arts and cultural events. So I think that there's kind of a natural, um, a natural working already a natural working relationship. So I think that there are ways that we can weave that into one of the um, top six primary results. Mm -hmm. That what, what you just uh, suggested is that was the original game plan for today. And, and one recommendation I could, or proposal uh, to consider is Perhaps we can move forward 
trying to do that, trying to look for all the ways as we talk today that both arts and culture and education specifically fit into definitions for any of your other results. Um, and and I'll show you the I'll show you the wrap up slide. Um, we were going to try to commemorate finalized results and definitions, and we can see how we are doing at the end of today's uh, workshop overall. And if it feels comfortable, if you're feeling satisfied that, wow, all right, now I get it. Arts and culture is definitely incorporated into these other results, then that's great. If, you, if you're still feeling that um, arts and culture, it's, it, it doesn't seem right and you still wanna consider it as an additional result, uh, perhaps we can, you're not, you haven't hit the eight mark yet. Um, and if there's enough support for trying it out in a different way, we could consider that for arts and culture. Um, this is Commissioner Reynolds, and I apologize. I was not here for the first reading, but uh, meeting, but I, I was kind of shocked to see that art and culture, as well as uh, diversity um, and inclusion, was not part of the big picture here. Mm -hmm. um, that was definitely a part of the discussion from workshop one was okay. you're not alone. Okay. Uh, they're given the uh, feedback from the survey, arts and culture and diversity, equity and inclusion. It's not that they had no support. It was just, um, and I can go back to the large list here from the slides from last go around. Uh, it was that given the goal to try to get to six to eight final result areas, um, their support was closer to 40% for diversity, equity, and inclusion, 36 for arts and culture, 35 for community. And the takeaway was, um, we've seen this before. And so to the extent that we could Cr still create a scoring criteria for diversity, equity, inclusion, and or create ways to weave in these other key concepts into the fabric, into the result definition of, of many different results, um, that maybe that would be more true to what you think is legitimate. Well, and Chris, if I could address Commissioner Reynolds' question um, for just a second, uh, you know, sure. we were also surprised, particularly around the diversity, equity, inclusion work, because it's so prominent in our whole community and it's a focus yes. of the city. Yes. And so as we talked about it, what we want to make sure is that that's embedded in everything that we do. So it, it made more sense for us to make it a program attribute so that every service that we provide has to be scored against a diversity, equity, inclusion attribute. Whereas if you make it a community result, um, then it, it's a standalone and, and we didn't feel like it, it, it embedded it enough in everything that we do. Um, and so that was a staff recommendation because it didn't make the top, you know, it didn't make the top eight, but then there were others like education that came off since that's not a direct service. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. where we came, that's where we started talking about, okay, um, what could be um, combined in a result? And then what could be um, infused as a definition of our community results? But, you know, but what I'm hearing, and I think what Chris is saying too is, these are not set in stone. If we get through the definition um, pr practice, or if the commissioners are just saying you want or arts and culture to be um, the eighth result, assuming that this list that Chris has up right now is our seven, that can happen as well. And so I just wanted to make sure that we're, we are understanding, because I heard what um, Commissioner Morris said also is that she's had a chance to reflect um, so is Commissioner Herring and Vice Mayor Ferris. So if we need to revisit those primary results, we certainly can. And if it's the desire of the commission that we just go ahead and add arts and culture, um, or does it, is it, does it make sense to combine with recreation as we are considering with the environment, physical appearance and community design? Thank you. That was a mouthful. So you're welcome. Yeah. I hope that helped Commissioner Reynolds. 
well, and, and to help explain the basic program attribute a little bit more in detail. The best practice that we're seeing most communities that we work with do is, as your city manager has articulated, to ensure that every program and service that you have is scored against that, just like we score against a mandate or population served or cost recovery. And so the basic program attribute uh, placement of a diversity, equity, inclusion actually makes that, again, a more germane and specific target and goal for your staff as they begin to think about the programs and services that you provide. This so is I have Commissioner, a, I'm sorry. So I have a, this is Commissioner Herring. I have a quick question. So will, if we're going to set a community standard that, um, excuse me, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is, you know, like the standard for all and embedded into all these, will it be in writing because my concern is that if we just say oh that's the standard i don't want us to go back and it be missed at any point will that be an in writing kind of hey the economy portion of this will be um, embedded with diversity inclusion and equity and what exactly how would how would we state something like that so that we can make sure that it's held to those standards that we're looking for that's excellent comment. And so <laughs> we're kind of getting to what we were going to share at the very end, but maybe it's appropriate to bring that up now. So because that was part of the survey, we took the definitions and the input from the survey and created um, a DEI definition that becomes the basic program attribute. So, you know, this is our proposal. Um, for consideration by the commission and then every program. So I I'm trying to think of a good program. So um, the, the, the RMAP program, the Rental Mortgage and Assistant Program, that, that it gets scored about whether or not it provides services, programs, and meaningful, meaningful participation opportunities to every person in Battle Creek, no matter you know, any of those particular um, characteristics. So everybody would, you'd have to score against that. Does that, is that what you're thinking or, or are you thinking something more specific? Um, that's that's kind of on the lines of it. I just want to make sure that it's not, that there's no way to wiggle around it. I want to make sure that it's set in stone so that we are making sure that what this commission is is, is putting into work is something that, and I apologize, I'm not coming off clear today, is something that is going to be set in stone and that there's no, no gray area. No, I understand, um, Commissioner Herring, you are for perfectly clear and, uh, and we agree. And I echo that, Commissioner Reynolds. This is Commissioner Zenda Wilson. I, I don't want to get um, ahead of your process because I realize we've already thrown a couple uh, wrenches in the in the whole process and as a facilitator by day I know how challenging that is to try and think on your feet now but I worry I just want to put my um, support in for reconsidering arts and culture as well um, and for a couple reasons I, I worry about it getting embedded or weaved I still think we can have that conversation about how it goes in but when I think about the importance of it being um, a priority in and of itself, it doesn't get lost. And it is really about who we are and what we're saying we're about. Because I think that if I were to try and figure out where it would weave into, there's a couple places, but I actually think it rises up to economy more than it does um, our recreation. I think that when you think about the creative industries, they provide direct economic benefits to communities by creating jobs, attracting investments, generating tax revenue, and stimulating local economies through tourism. There's a lot there that is much more about economy than it is anything else. But for that reason, I wonder if it just bubbles up to its own priority. And I'm glad that we've got room and that we'll be making a decision later. And that we're not walking in here with a, a defined set of, of priorities yet. So thank you. Hi, um, Hi, Commissioner Commissioner Blood here. Um, I had a few questions, Chris. Uh, I'm glad that you're on this page. <clears throat> so I see economy is listed as number one, but in ranked order, safety was number one. The rankings you have on here, do they, um, is there a meaning behind them or are they just the seven? No meaning, be, no meaning implied intentionally okay. uh, to the, 
to the order. Okay. Um, next question. So I've listened to my my colleagues, and a lot many of them are hitting the nail on the head on a few things. And I see when we look at number six, if you could make that a little larger so people can see it. Um, it says environment, physical appearance, and community design. If we go back to what we discussed previously, community design was ranked number thirteen. Yes, it yet it was significant enough to have its name within the primary result and listed there with environment and physical appearance. So I think if arts and culture, diversity, equity, inclusion, and education are part of the things we want to weave in, what I'm hearing is we can't just weave them in. We need to give them a a name within the results. So here we gave community design a name within the results and we physically put the name in there because we said it was important. So I think it's also important that if we're going to want education, arts and culture, then they need to be names. They need to be words that are further on this. And just speaking, um, transparently you know we ask the community to go through and list these things so if we as a, a city weren't ready to make education a result or arts and culture a result then maybe perhaps it shouldn't have been a part of the survey um so if people chose these as part of the survey then we need to listen and we need to put them in. I mean, education was number four and we're thinking about weaving it in. Um, I, I think we need to name it. And um, that's just my piece. Hi everyone, sorry I'm late and I'm not sure, Vicki, if you can record me, but I'm attending remotely from Battle Creek, Michigan. Thank you. Great comments. Thanks for the feedback. Um, well, uh, one one proposal that it's absolutely appropriate for people who have reflected since the first go around, um, and it's it is easy for us to uh, consider arts and culture specifically. I know that was the the majority of the conversation as its own result. Um, that is that if you would rather go down that path, given your opportunity to reflect, um, then we could handle it like all of the other result areas in this workshop and consider it on its own uh, without the, creating any difficulty in our initial objective of trying to land on six to eight results. If, if you would rather go down that path, that's your... You have every right to do that. So this is Vice Mayor Ferris again. And yes, I would like to add that as the eighth result. And um, as far as ec uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, I like the proposal that you have. It can definitely, we can write it in not only as a separate thing, but as we go through each of the bubbles and we can, we can add it to make sure that it directly relates to each of these results. and. Um, Somehow, I would I would also, as as we talk about stuff, like to add environment because I think that there's a difference between physical environment and environmentalism and sustainability. And I think that sustainability should be on par with diversity, equity, and inclusion when we're looking at each of the individual results. And this is Commissioner Herring, and I agree with everything Commissioner Ferris just said. I, well, Commissioner I'm, Reynolds, and I echo that as well. <clears throat> is um, just so I, I want to hear what you're echoing. I just want to be very clear. I, was the last call to break out environment, as in environment and sustainability, as its own result, not have it combined? Is that what I heard? There, there are two separate things that I'm speaking of. So we can leave it environment because you can look at it as just environment. It, it has to do with the physical appearance of something, but also sure. we, we've had a real, uh, I don't know, a lot of work done around sustainability. And in the past, we have looked at the word environment as in environmentalism and uh, mm -hmm. sustainability and used that to judge our community results. 
I think, or if I might clarify, Chris, um, and Vice Mayor Ferris, I just want to clarify. So what you were saying is that you would like environmentalism sustainability to be woven in similar to what we talked about at program attribute with diversity, equity, inclusion. Is that is that correct or am I not uh, correct? No, that's exactly what I'm talking about, Rebecca, is that okay. it would be one of those attributes that like no, no matter what the program is, no matter what the result is, we're going to always have that as part of our community culture and part of our uh, corporate culture that we're going to look at equity and, and diversion and inclusion and we're going to look at environmentalism when, when we're um, when we're judging and scoring things. Okay, and, and just to clarify when we talk about those primary results does environment remain. I'm fine leaving that word there. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to summarize where I think we are. Quickly. And I think we have This, oh, the others are like mandated. Um, served. Demand. Reliance. Okay. <laughs> and rely. Thanks, Eric. Okay, let me tr let me uh, restate where I think that we are, um, and uh, open this back up again so we you can help uh, course correct. I believe that our primary community results that we want to work on for this workshop, knowing that we're going to do our best to push towards result definitions, and then if there's still some discussion, even after we get through these today that you want to uh, have, have one more time to reflect with what we propose back, that that's, that's appropriate. Um, but I believe the community orient, oriented results that we have are economy, safety, utilities, recreation, transportation, the combined environment, physical appearance, and community design, and arts and culture, as your community facing results um, and then your internal result as governance. And then uh, we have our basic program attributes, which include environmentalism, diversity, equity, and inclusion, degree of mandate. Now I'm getting into our standard ones, degree of mandate, population served by a program, cost recovery, change in demand, and the degree of reliance that your citizens have on you. Um, and then we've narrowed down our list of uh, uh, the, the other result that didn't quite fit in the last time was education as a more of a means to an end rather than an end in and of itself. But that's the point of a result definition is discuss, discussing the hows, how do we achieve a result uh, and so education might be on our minds today as we consider result definitions. Please feel free to comment or uh, make other suggestions, but does this sound right? And comment if you think this is uh, the right path as well. Thumbs up, thank you. One thumbs up. All right, two thumbs up. We got it perfect. Wow, thumbs are coming out of the woodwork. This is great. Well, um, great. Thank you very much. Um, that was a great refinement of our work from workshop one. And I hope you feel more comfortable with this. Now we can get into some results definition work. Um, and Rebecca, I think we can, I think it's safe to say that as a result of all the work that we do today, 
it would still be appropriate if we have, uh, it, it, as we produce final results and definitions, an opportunity to reflect once once everybody has a chance to see it in a in a draft form. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. So next step, and I'm going to do a recalculation of time. Um, so it's four to six ten year time, and meeting schedule. It uh, is to 7.30 p.m. Eastern, which gives us one hour and 20 minutes, which is 80 minutes. We have 80 minutes and we have eight results. So approximately, approximately, no, no intent to rush, but I'm doing some quick math with you on the fly. Uh, I think uh, it was a, um, one of the council members could have got me there faster. Uh, 10 minutes there. All right, we're gonna dive right in and we'll start with economy and I will make my screen larger. Um, and how I suggest we walk through these I'm going to read out loud. It shouldn't take me more than two minutes to do so, but this will give everybody a familiarity with the types of definitions that have been included for a particular result. So you can hear them and it would register. Um, we have a similar goal of trying to uh, get down to approximately, if, if we can get to five to seven definitions, um, that is our overall goal same idea when you have so many definitions uh it, it it can water down the result overall mind you departments are not scoring against every single one of these definitions but they're meant to try to help the department communicate to you whether their program influences this result or not these are all in bullet point form but if you added these up i believe there are one two three four five six seven eight nine uh definitions for economy um, and a couple helpful ways to go about uh, our approach to get them down to five to seven. One is process of elimination. Do you see any of these result definitions that just don't resonate um, as you read through them uh, that they are not hitting the mark for how a, how a department would communicate how their program influences this result? Another opportunity would be, can you combine any uh, particular result definitions with each other, are they similar enough concepts where you, we could extend the sentence or the statement for a definition and get down to something simpler? Um, and or is there any place to draw a line? For example, 47%, um, 57, 50%, 51% support. Is there any place where you would propose uh, drawing the line at uh, a certain percentage of support overall. So I'm going to read all of these off uh, for hopefully no more than two minutes. And then we're going to take two minutes for some self-reflection. And as we come back off of mute, I would love to hear, are there any results that you think don't make the list, any results you, you would propose combining, and we'll tackle it like that. Okay, so for economy, the very first result is um, to the extent a program encourages and supports local businesses, you are achieving your overarching result of economy. Second definition is creates a business-friendly environment that encourages business and economic growth. Third, encourages quality job creation and growth and workforce training. Fourth, works in collaboration to attract, recruit, and retain a diverse mix of businesses encourages and promotes sustainable development and redevelopment. Next result definition, provides a place to live with quality housing, safety, and access to basic needs. Provides transportation and utilities that support business expansion and development. Offers vibrant downtown and commercial areas. And finally, is attractive to visitors and for tourism. Given these definitions, I'll set a quick timer for two minutes uh, and then we'll 
have some open dialogue. I'll let you know when the two minutes are up. Is there any way to make those just a little bigger? Thank you, Commissioner Herring. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I'll give it a shot. I think we're challenging you tonight. <laughs> I was job. squinting trying to see and it's hurting my brain. So yes. <laughs> Try to make you happy here. <laughs> No problem. A little better. Cool. Thank you. You bet. I'm going to suggest that we combine bullet proof uh, point one and five. I'll let you guys do the verbiage. Mm -hmm. All right. That was the timer. Um, so I appreciate that. Thank, thanks, Mayor, for uh, combining encourages and supports local business with one, two, three, four, five, encourages and promotes sustainable development and redevelopment. Um, so we have two encourages and supports. And if they're a, a similar enough concept, um, then that is one way to get down to now eight definitions. This is Commissioner Zender Wilson. I have a question and a suggestion. Um, first of all, this the question. This past year has shown us um, the integral role child care plays in our economy. And I know we don't spell it out anywhere specifically, but I know that it's a critical part of the infrastructure that supports our Battle Creek economy by supporting parents as they get back to work. And I don't know if there is a way for us to be explicit about child care as a workforce and economic development tool. So that's a question. My suggestion might be that between bullets two and three, that if we said creates a business friendly environment that encourages businesses and economic economic growth that encourages quality job creation and growth and workforce training, is that something that could be combined? Mm -hmm. So we have, um, so just one statement. These are, these are I'll, I'll try to help you consider your statement on uh, childcare or your proposal. Um, these are your, you are the elected officials um, is your role to establish results and definitions and the departments will come behind you and try to evaluate programs or communicate how programs influence these results and definitions. Yes, you went out to the citizens and we started with these statements, but to the extent that you want to propose that adding something specific around child care is appropriate and you have the support of your colleagues, um, if that makes it more clear and legitimate, then that's, my job is to be the scribe and help you strategize on ways to incorporate it. Now, if a citizen asked you, uh, where did that come from? Then you would say, we talked as a council and we 
uh, added this particular component because we thought it was very important. This is Commissioner Herring. So I agree with what Commissioner Wilson, Zinda Wilson had to say. I feel like childcare could be put where it says provides a place to live with quality housing, safety and access to basic needs, such mm -hmm. as child, child care, transportation and utilities and provide and include the provides transportation and utilities to support business expansion and development because child care is a basic need. Housing and safety is a basic need. Transportation is a basic need. We have places in Battle Creek now that can't keep employees because people can't get to work. So I, I think those are, are two that could be combined as a basic need. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Herring. I'd add also that childcare is a business in and of itself and our support of it as a business is something else that could be weaved in. And I'll let you guys, I just wanna place that out there, but how that gets weaved in, I just wanna be clear about that too. I agree with the both of you, this is Commissioner Ferris, that um, yeah, childcare is definitely part of the infrastructure which supports our, our working people here in Battle Creek. So yes. I would agree that it should be there. Okay, this is Commissioner Sophia. So what role does the city play in helping people secure childcare? I mean, that's basically what we're doing. If I understand what this exercise tonight is, is trying to outline the functions that the city is going to prioritize. So why, well, what I, I help me to understand that, I guess, is my question. Wait, I, I can help you from the. Yeah. Go ahead, Commissioner. I'm sorry, this is Commissioner Senda Wilson. I just, so I think my second comment, uh, Commissioner Sophia, really got to that. I think that if we are providing economic development tools and support to other businesses, child care should be among them because they are in and of themselves businesses as well. Um, so, I, so if I'm understanding you then, then kind of calling out the businesses that we're going to support, is that an accurate? I think to date, um, and this could be a philosophical conversation we have, that child care has been left um, away from those tables for too long and seen, care is seen actually as a service instead of a business. And I think that that's part of the challenge and why we're here right now. And so there's a little bit of a feeder issue that goes on there is that when we don't have enough childcare for many reasons, part of it is because there is no business support for the business end of what they do. And so we, the city could provide a lot of support in that area. Whether or not it gets called out because we don't have other particular sectors called out, right. I, think there's a, I think there's a philosophical point to be made here about giving it some recognition. So that this is Commissioner. The, go ahead. Thank you. This is Commissioner Reynolds. And I actually think bullet point the last and the second from last could be together as well. We're talking about a vibrant downtown um, and commercial areas, along with the attractive of, of bringing in visitors and tourism. That could one be one in one loop there. Commissioner Morris, um, I agree with Commissioner Reynolds, except I almost think that the last bullet doesn't belong here. I think it kind of belongs with physical appearance. And I think that the second to last bullet covers what we need as far as making it attractive from an economic standpoint. And, and Chris, not to belabor the point, but I think Commissioner Sophia's question about well, if you articulate a particular definition, in some instances, that may also infer that you would be providing that service. So if we go back to childcare, I hear what you're saying and agree 100%. But if you are articulating and saying that we are going, if, if you're saying support it, that's one thing. If you're just saying we want childcare, that, that may infer that you might be getting into the childcare business. So again, as you think about these definitions, uh, it's supporting why you're in the business, why you exist. The city exists. Does the city exist to provide child care? No, but the city might exist to ensure that child care, housing, those elements that are critical to a strong economy or any of your other results 
um, you need to make sure that you articulate that wording very carefully. Yeah. Really good. Um, okay, and and we did have a proposal uh, that we can return back to you with in a, in a definition that we take provides a place to live with quality housing, safety, and access to basic needs such as childcare, transportation, and utilities um, combined with that support business expansion and development. So that's that's where you get your how does this fit in overall? Um, it's a tool for business expansion and, and development. Um, I, Brad and I and Eric and uh, Team Battle Creek will compare notes, but I have a recommendation for one in five to be combined, um, a recommendation for the inclusion of, of child care um, as a such as child care, transportation, and utilities that support business expansion and development. So that's a combination of six and seven. We have a combination of two and three and a combination of eight and nine with the possibility that nine is removed altogether. That's my summary. And what we'll do is, I, I, I think the best bet is we'll, we're gonna be good listeners tonight, take the recommendations and the feedback, synthesize it and come back with these draft results and, re, and result definitions based on your feedback. Chris, uh, by chance, did you see what I typed in? I thought it would be easier oh. to type them in so you would just see them rather than <laughs> have me say them. So I just typed them out already. That is wonderful. Brad, if you can copy those, okay, we're on the same page, copy those notes as we go and we'll add them to my notes and together we will have a complete set. Thank you. Plus I appreciate that. I took eight of them and condensed them down to four, which would leave you with a total of five. And Chris, awesome. I, don't, I don't want to belabor it, but I think that I do want to just put on the record that I, I think that there needs to be something more explicit about what kind of business support childcare gets. And I don't know where that fits into our process as a city, but I'm afraid like in other places, we end up uh, deferring, inferring, assuming that it's, I don't think there's any assumption that I think the city's going to get into the childcare business. That's not what I'm suggesting at all. But I do think that we could be a lot more explicit about it somewhere and not just that we'll collaborate to make sure that it's available, but that there is something more we could do. Wonderful. We hear you and we're, take, we're taking the notes to make sure that we're capturing. It's not that you provide it. Um, but we need to work on the wording. There's another hand up. Uh, I can't see. Yes, Jill Steele. Um, I just wanted okay. to remind commissioners on this issue of the child care that um, it's, it's um, we'd have to work on some of the nuances of it. Because you remember before the city could spend any funds, there has to be the authority to do it somewhere. And that's not something that. Uh, um, is in the Home Rule City Act to, to spend money on um, child care. So I understand, and, and it is a very, very important issue, but just kind of as a reminder to keep that in the back of your head um, as you're thinking about how that works in. Thank you. Uh, I, I, so I think I'm, maybe I'm not being really clear. I don't, I think the business support that the city could provide child care providers themselves, that there will be nothing about what I'm suggesting is that the city would be paying for any child care at all or doing any child care. It would be that there would be support like you would give another business that comes to town, right? Or a restaurant that's opening up downtown. It would be the same, but you would be considering that child care are businesses in the same light. So thank you for all the clarity. I agree with that, Commissioner Zonda Wilson. This is Commissioner Ferris. And what, what I wanted to say relates to um, one of the points here that says works in collaboration to attract, recruit, and retain a quote, diverse mix of businesses. Uh, I think we need to be more specific there. We don't want just a random disbursement of businesses. We want businesses that have been identified through the, um, through the mapping that we have done around our local economy. So I don't know if, if we can collaborate with staff to come up with some more specific wording there, but there's been a lot of work done to identify specific diverse businesses that we need in this area 
So I want to make sure that those are the businesses that we're going after. Um, did you have, did you have a proposal on any specific uh, businesses there? It sounds like, is there a next step to your recommendation? I would just say diverse mix of businesses, comma, as identified through mapping of, uh, of our, our local economy, or I, I can't remember the, the nomenclature that was given to that process. Perhaps Rebecca can help me on that. Okay. Yes, I think Sounds we have the language. It's not, I don't have it right at my fingertips, but between Ted and I, we will insert that once you, into, when, as we send back the draft. Thank you. But I think that we need to be very clear and very intentional that if someone comes to us with a business idea and they are looking for support, looking, and not financial support, but whatever support we would provide any business, even if it's not, kind of on the approved list of what we're looking for, that we're not turning businesses away because they don't fit into our box. And I'm not suggesting that either, but there have been some very specific types of businesses that have been identified, especially around food production and, and making this a more, um, a, a more centralized food valley type of a place. And I, I think that we need to continue that and continue to support the local economy based upon the data that we have. Great. Okay. Um, you will, to the one of the points raised earlier, you will have a chance to consider proposed results and, and definitions that come back to you. So you'll get another chance. Uh, but this is tremendous feedback. I'm going to move us on to the next result to keep our progress going. Um, this is safety. I'll be faster uh, as I read through these, but we have provides fire services, provides safety from violent crime, enforces laws fairly and justly, provides police services, supports ambulance or other emergency medical services, supports feeling safe in your neighborhood, is prepared for emergencies like natural disasters and epidemics, provides crime prevention, supports feeling safe in downtown and commercial areas, creates safe travel through the city for motorists, pedestrians, and cyclists, and provides fire prevention and education. We'll do the same thing and give everybody two minutes time to reflect. Um, Chris, how many are you trying to get it down to on this one? Thanks for the question. Same objective for all of them. If we can try to condense around five to seven definitions, uh, we have our focused definitions. That's the goal for all of the results. Thank you. Sure. I definitely think that we could combine one and the last one because fire safety could definitely be provided through the fire services. Um, the fire uh, prevention um, classes are even taking place now in schools where officers and deputies are going in and giving that type of uh, safety uh, education. So. I don't see where we have to separate those for fire that's a, services. Commissioner Morris, I think that's a valid suggestion. Uh oh, you're breaking up, dear. Sorry, I accidentally pressed mute. <laughs> um, I think it's a valid suggestion. I also think that we need to um, be specific about making sure that the language for education is included in there because I do feel that it's important to have that um, education. 
as mm -hmm. well as different fire services. And this is Commissioner Zenda Wilson. I actually would like to propose that we consider under bullet four provides police services that, and we can add to that plus second bullet, sixth bullet, eighth bullet, ninth bullet, and 10th bullet. If that is too long, but it would say then provides police service that provides safety from violent crime, supports feeling safe in your neighborhood, provides crime prevention, supports a feeling of safe downtown commercial areas, and creates safe travel through the city. Hmm. So is, is your suggestion that all of that comes after police services, or is it services that do that? Is it only police that would, I just want you to recognize yeah, that that would. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, good distinction. So maybe I would pull support, hmm, feeling safe in your service. neighborhood out because that might be a different service, right? Yeah. Oh, let me think about that a little bit. Thank you for that distinction. Sure. And the other thing I was thinking about is we might want to pull out the, the feeling safe traveling because that might have more to do with our actual um, DPW instead of, instead of mm. police. This is I'm Commissioner not... Herring. Whoops. You can go ahead. This is Commissioner Herring. I almost feel like a lot of it could be lumped together, provide safety, education, and emergency surges, services fairly justly in all areas of the city, not just, you know, where it would be for motor, motorists or pedestrians or for businesses or just in general. Like you could almost lump a lot of that together. Um, similar to the last one, if can you point me to the ones that you think would be great to lump together? Uh, I know these don't have numbers. I'm sorry. In retrospect, um, that would have been nice. But here's this is one through eleven, I believe. Okay, and so like providing emergency services such as fire, um, that would be, where are we at? Fire, ambulance and emergency medical services, um, critical crime services. Like you, I feel like you could lump a lot of that together instead yeah. of having all these separate things here. You know, safety, if you're safe, if we make it so that you're safe within the city, regardless of police, fire or um, emergency medical services, that should cover for the whole for the whole city. Like instead of saying, oh, we want you to feel safe from in fire emergencies or safe in medical emergencies or safe in <laughs> police, like you should be able to say that all in one and not just have it separate, like feeling safe in downtown or commercial areas. No, yeah. Feeling safe at your home. It seems a little redundant to me. I yeah, I agree because it's it's really um signaling uh, the downtown and I mean, that should be the entire city of Battle Creek, not just downtown. Agreed. Craziness happens everywhere. <laughs> Thank you for both comments. And uh, we'll come back with a recommendation in this spirit. Something Chris, that I bet you didn't know you were getting all this tonight, did you? Hey, it's good. You're... Uh, <laughs> All of this is appropriate, right? You have to stand behind these results and definitions. So we want to make sure that they're good for you. So we're, please don't feel, uh, don't, don't worry about me. I'm, we're here to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> this is Commissioner Ferris. Something that I don't see under safety that I think should be under this is something referencing our code compliance department. Um, that's, uh, safety is why that entire department exists. And in the past, we've had something on here regarding um, nu nuisance abatement and um, blight, remedying blight throughout the city. Um, so I'm wondering if, if we want to name something in regard to code compliance on this list. I also agree with that, that we need to think about um, our structures and code compliance. So thank you, Katie, for bringing that up. Wonderful. All of these comments are fantastic. I think we have, I can't recite 
as succinctly as the last one, which ones we're combining, because we have like a, a decent amount of combination that we're considering. Um, but we're tracking these notes. Any, any other additional feedback on safety? No, but I, I, just want, I just want to make sure everyone understands that we got to be cognizant of our time. The discussion is some of the best discussion I've seen from this commission. So I want to say thank you in advance, but at the same time, um, I don't want to drag it out too long tonight. So thank you, everyone. And we made I, up a, I a little bit of time on the last, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Sorry, this is Commissioner Ferris again. I don't want to drag things out too long, but is this another place where we need to um, refer to diversity, equity, and inclusion because that has a, a lot to do with personal safety and feeling safe in a place is, is knowing that you are accepted and acknowledged for the whole of your being. I agree. And, and I wonder about yes. that being enforcing laws fairly and justly, if there, if maybe being more explicit even in there with our, <laughs> our language around equity. Yes, fairly, justly, equitable, all that should be added into that. So I agree as well. Okay, great. Brad, you good? Any clarifications you need? I'm muted and I was just on the last note. Um, what was the definition that you were just referring to fairly just, justly and equitable taken into account? Number two, the bullet point number two, or no, no, excuse three. me, number three, number enforces three. laws fairly, justly and equitably. Yep. But the definition you were talking about was the one that we used, I think, for the, what's the language that you used earlier about how we're going to incorporate it, the basic program attribute. I think yes. there was some language in yes. there. Yeah, totally. Got it. Cool, I'm good. Me too. All right, thanks everybody. We made up a little bit of time on, the, on this one, believe it or not. Um, okay, the utilities definition. We have, um, we can make up some serious time, but I won't steer the crowd. We have provides access to safe drinking water. We have provides sewer services, provides storm drainage, provides flood control, including dams, effective stormwater management. And we have provides affordable high-speed internet access. I have a question about the last one provides affordable high speed internet access. How is that going to work when we, you know, are we going to take on um, providing that? Because at this point, I don't know that we do provide that. Are we going to provide a service like Comcast? Um, can someone tell me exactly what that means there? <clears throat> I can only make a speculation, um, Chris, if I might. Um, I can only speculate. Um, but a lot of times we're asked uh, if we would leverage or allow tap-ins to our fiber network. We've also been asked to provide high-speed internet access at the neighborhood level. Since we're so large, it's not really something that we can provide you know, citywide because of our, our, our massive geographic boundaries. Um, so I imagine, again, I'm speculating because this is the sur these are survey results that that's what everyone's thinking. And because we basically initiated the survey during the pandemic where many, many families are having to do a lot of things virtually and they're, and we know that we've got a disparity um, in pockets in this city um, to be able to even uh, support that. And you're right, we probably won't necessarily be the provider, but could we look at options um, at a neighborhood level or leveraging um, our own fiber network. I also think this could be a place where we include language about collaboration. I think there's work mm -hmm. being done at the county level around um, broadband access and with the city as a partner in that, not necessarily providing it, but our, our role as partner could be important. Great point. So this is Commissioner Reynolds, and I actually think when you talk about the flood control and the storm drainage, that's one and the same, because when you have storm, you do have a problem with drainage. 
in the systems. Not sure if the sewer could be included in that, but I think at least uh, number three and four could be combined. This is Commissioner Herring. I feel like um, we could also put something where we combined all those and said, you know, we would provide safe and efficient water drain and sewer services and stormwater management. That could be like a, mm -hmm. a, a one sentence kind of deal right there. Sure. Great recommendation. Chris, this is Commissioner Ferris. I have a question. In the past, when we've looked at utilities, we've also combined that with just um, infrastructure, including roads. Will roads be covered when we talk about transportation later? You got it. Transportation ended up as its own uh, category. Okay, thank you. You bet. Okay. Great feedback. Um, I think we can capture some more time. We can move right into transportation. Thank you, Commissioner Blood, as well. Uh, if that is helpful. Again, there is no priority order to these. And I like that you are no longer in need of the two minutes of self-reflection. So I will modify and just set a general timer for discussion for each of these. And you can jump right in as you see fit. Um, so for transportation and mobility, we had removed snow, plans for, builds, and improves road systems and bridges, maintains street lights, makes it easy to travel by public transit, it works with partners in the community to develop and improve transportation infrastructure, maintains sidewalks, enforces traffic laws, makes it easy to walk, makes it easy to travel by car, provides a network of paths, trails, and bike lanes that are safe and accessible, makes it easy to travel by bicycle, and makes it easy to park in public spaces. This is Commissioner Sophia. I, we don't maintain streetlights at all, do we? I mean, I thought that that was a consumer's energy thing. And so when somebody's got a problem, that's who is detailed to deal with that problem. So I think that that is not relevant to the services that we offer, unless there's something that I'm not aware of. There are some street lights that we maintain, like the decorative lighting, um, oh. th those types of things are okay, not necessarily, those. yeah. Okay, not not the overhead. But you are correct, consumers okay. has the most, you know, but, but yes, there are some that we maintain. And Carl, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you. Oh, that's accurate. Commissioner Morris, <clears throat> I think that all of the makes it easiest besides the um, travel by public transit, all of those could fit into maintenance, like the, well, not specifically maintenance because it doesn't say that, but uh, the plans for builds and improves road systems, maintain sidewalks, you know, like the walking, I think that could be part of the sidewalks, the making it easy to travel by car could be part of maintaining our roads or whatever. Kind of like maintaining all avenues needed for public transportation, because that would include your sidewalks, that would include your streets and such. Commissioner Blood here. Um, so make it easy to walk, make it easy to travel by car, make it easy to travel by bike. I'm not sure how to type this one out, so I'm going to speak it and there's someone smarter than me that can um, combine them. But how can we make this into one succinct statement that talks about accessibility in our city. So, you know, instead of making it easy to walk and thinking that everybody walks or that everybody bikes or that everybody is on a car, how can we create a definition that um, talks about providing um, uh, accessibility to all or providing, you know, taking all of that and smooshing it into an accessible city where we think about our walkers, our riders, our cyclists, our wheelchairs, our um, blind blind, and and hard of hearing and deaf and, and, and just make it into one good definition. 
I like our that modes of transportation. Mm-hmm. Yep, multimodal. <laughs> well, I think that it's it's really about us. Our, I'm sorry, our trans, our providing the infrastructure necessary for accessible ways to get around or something about because I don't even think it's transportation. I think it's it's how we all have to move, right? So thank you for lifting that up, Commissioner Blood. I think that's really, really important. And our language can often get um, very ableist without us realizing it, so. So the last time around when we did this, rather than just saying transportation or mobility, our result that we had was, was longer than that. It was connected, accessible, and reliable transportation network. And, and through that definition, we we encompassed all of those things. I like that. Yes, as long as everything's mentioned, perfect. And does enforces traffic laws get us into safety? Does it belong here, or does it? Didn't we? Already you don't have to. Safety? You don't have to parse it out if you think that enforcing traffic laws leads to greater accessibility and mobility um, as we're talking about that that without enforcing traffic laws it would have a negative impact on transportation mobility um, it, it, overlap is okay and the reason i bring it up is that we still have a lot in our culture around implicit bias that we have to address who gets enforced and who doesn't. And so I, I want to make sure that we're using an, an equity lens, even when we're using, you know, thinking about our language about what we're enforcing. It just, yeah. Um, so I just want to lift up really quick um, that I'm really excited to see transportation of part of the results that came in. And when we go to the fifth bullet point and it talks about working with partners and community to develop and improve transportation infrastructure. Um, I really hope this means that we will be heavily investing in our transportation infrastructure. Again, this pandemic has showed us that um, we need to be creative with the way people get around our town. And um, we have a great transportation system, a great director out there. And um, I just, I, I really wanna see this to be a way of supporting, not just all the roads and the streets, but the way in which um, people move within our city and use the transportation. So I'm, I'm just really happy to see it. So thanks. Great point. Thank you, residents. They both put this one in. Awesome. Brad, any further clarification you need? I took a lot of notes. Yeah, no, I'm I'm good. I think uh, looks really good suggestions. It's really it's fun to hear this and and type it along as I'm going. <laughs> it's coming together, and um, let's move to the next one. We're making good progress. Let's see here. So we did utilities. Uh, I want to do. Oops, recreation. Okay. So we had, for recreation is the result, um, responses included offers community parks, neighborhood parks, green spaces, and lakes, supports an active lifestyle, offers recreation facilities, offers recreation programs, and connects the community with pedestrian and bike trail path, bike trail slash path network. This is Commissioner Reynolds. All of that actually could be combined. Can you, sounds great. We um, talked about, I mean, you're, you're talking about the rec recreation of the facility, uh, active lifestyle, community parks. That's a, that's a lifestyle. That's, that's exercise in the park. Um, you're walking, you're biking. Um, uh, 
recreational programs. You connect the community with pedestrians and bike trails. So yeah, that's that's all combined. I, 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 as I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner. Any anybody else have some reflection on recreation? Can I, just I agree with Commissioner Reynolds. And that, this is Commissioner Zenda Wilson, just a question for clarity. What does it mean to connect the community with pedestrian and bike trail path network? Um, I, my interpretation would be so, so many communities we work with endeavor to create connections that you could get from your home perhaps to another uh, component of the city uh, via a connected trail system, whereas some communities have large gaps. And so it's, it is truly hard to get to another place without accessing a vehicle. Thank you, yes. it's been a long day and I was thinking about connecting the community in a different way. I just read it differently, <laughs> so I, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly right. We have a lot of the linear path that we would like to connect with the larger regional trails. And so the city has a non-motorized transportation plan that that, you know, is kind of outlined and that we focus on that um, as grant programs and funding becomes available. So I see um, there's the additional definition suggestion of maintaining all parts it says pristinely, including playground equipment. Um, I understand the budget constraints and I understand the cost to maintain parks, but I think that that's one area where we really do fall short. Um, I've got a park that's less than a block from my house and frequently when the city mows it, it looks like they've mown a hay field. Um, it, I think that if we're going to talk about, you know, using our green spaces and getting more people into them, that we need to take a look at the way that those green spaces, the, the public parks in the neighborhoods are um, maintained. Thank you. I agree with that, Commissioner Sophia. Um, especially that park, the the playground equipment could use some work too. Um, and then the only other suggestion I had for this area was that we don't say anything about accessibility here. Um, currently, we have one playground that is fully accessible to any child. Um, so I think that that's something that we need to pay attention to here is um, both we, it's it's called out a little at the bottom talking about different ages but um different ability levels too need to be addressed great point and as a point of clarification on your point there commissioner ferris is it just the accessibility of the playground itself, or are all areas of your community have accessibility to a playground? Is that a concern as well? I, I think that most parts of town have playgrounds um, of, of some sort, but yeah, they're, they're definitely being maintained at different levels. Um, so that's something that we need to pay attention to as well. Fantastic. Let's move from recreation to, I added back in arts and culture. Um, and we have offers shopping, dining, entertainment venues, offers cultural arts and music activities, offers diverse and inclusive events and venues for cultural enrichment and celebration, supports the arts, and provides and promotes a diverse mix of leisure and athletic activities and festivals that are open to all. 
Can I just say I love all of that? I'll take a <laughs> yes for all of that. You can say that. Um, <clears throat> I love it too. I just want to kind of expand on supports the arts. Like how specifically are we going to commit to supporting the arts in our city? Did, great point. And did you have any thoughts on what um, anything in addition might include? Not really specifically, but making sure that there is um, art classes and things that teach our kids um, and not just kids, but everyone in the community and making sure that that's available to have arts classes and uh, music classes and other things like that that are available to everyone in the city, like through the city so that we don't have people um, go, having to go to outside companies and having to pay hundreds of dollars. And that makes it not accessible to everybody. So I wanna make sure that we make a commitment to making arts and cultures accessible to everyone in our city. And this is Commissioner Herring, and it could be also a collaboration, a collaboration or like some kind of city partnership where we just, where we show support by um, even just promoting these events, you know, offering city owned spaces for these events, mm. um, or even support the, the facilities such as the art center, who has yeah. been doing art and cultural activities for as long as I've been alive. And that's a long 42 years. <laughs> also like Friendship Park and the, you know, we have the entertainment down there too. That's all, that's always a nice place. Um, and uh, for our community to meet. And using community or city spaces as well for um, things like Color the Creek, who just their, their leader was on last budget meeting we had. And they've done numerous events in the city of Battle Creek, offering up the empty spaces such as the, the, um, the land where the Black Lives Matter mural is at. You know, just something such as that. You know, if there are spaces available where we can add art and culture to this city, I think we could definitely utilize those. Thanks, Commissioner Herring. I think what's missing for me, and I don't know where or how it belongs, is the visibility of art. I think, you know, you go to some communities and it's, you, you, you know, just by what you're looking at that arts and culture are um, expressed in a way that you see sculptures or different things around. We have murals, but I think that, that there isn't anything here that says anything about the importance of the visibility of art. And it could be under supports the arts and maybe it just gets called out there. But, such as Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids is a great definition of what you just said, Commissioner Wilson. If you drive into Grand Rapids, the second you get close to downtown, it's art everywhere. I would agree with both of you. And I think that part of the, part of the problem has been that there has not been an identified funding source to support the arts in Battle Creek. Like we don't have a fund to support even the Sojourner Truth statue. We don't have money to repair that. We don't have money to repair the monuments and Monument Park. We don't have, um, you know, further down on here is listed Kingman Museum. It's closed. Its entire collection is mothballed. Um, Regional History Museum is holding garage sales to support it staying open. Um, Heritage Battle Creek will have to relocate their entire inventory within the next several years. There's no funding source to support new art or to protect the cultural mm -hmm. heritage that we have here in Battle Creek. Mm -hmm. So then does that need to be a priority that the community, that the city is, is partnering to create sustainable uh, funding for some of our arts and culture? Hmm. Because we won't have the money for that, right? But what we could do is collaborate, support, and potentially find ways to to fund them. Hmm. Like, ugh. Yeah, the uh, Kellogg, or not the Kellogg, uh, the Battle Creek Community Foundation does a lot um, with um, arts and culture um, all over. So I think that might be a place that we could probably collaborate with. 
um, that could help us because they're very supportive in the arts. And what about like the downtown development authority? Um, if, if we're building up downtown and I sit on that committee, if we're building up downtown, I think art could definitely be a part of it that makes it a more attractive place to wanna bring a business or want to, or a way to draw in visitors or a way to draw in new people or fill up some of these spaces. Absolutely, absolutely. Because we've had the uh, art walk in Battle Creek for several years now, and it's it's been awesome. I mean, you have all walks of life and everyone enjoying themselves. I, I, I think that's uh, very important, Commissioner Herring, very. Yeah, like you said, Commissioner Reynolds, every single event that we hold here in town has arts at the center of it. All our, our fall into the arts, spring into the arts. Yes, yes. Art fairs, um, culinary art, music. It's at the center of every single one of these festivals and activities that we have here. I, I think that we need to just make sure that these things are being funded and that you know we, we show importance by showing money um, is, is what it comes down to for me. I think you hit it on the head, um, Katie, when you say it's about showing up with the money. Again, if I go back to my notes when we had this for our first meeting, um, the thing that the team had put out there and I wrote it down and made it all pretty and colorful um was it talked about leveraging our taxes i have to find i've had so many meetings since then it says leveraging our taxes so if this is how the city wants us to spend tax dollars then we need to find a way of putting um we need to find a way to fund the future that they want. That's again, something that you guys said um, in this workshop, I'm not sure who said it, but it says fund the future you want. So if people want a future of arts and culture, then we need to fund it. And what does that look like? It doesn't only look like collaborating with people. That's important. It's very important, right? When you look at arts and culture, it takes tons of people to get involved, but it also takes a commitment from the city, Katie, as you had pointed out, that puts money into something that if we want it, we need to fund it. And maybe Jill can speak to that, but I don't know that we can use city dollars to fund arts. I mean, I actually, I, there actually is um, a provision in the Home Rule City Act about um, art. I'll, I'll look it up here and I'll put it on the chat for you so I don't hold things up. Aren't there beautification dollars or some kind of fund for the city of Battle Creek? I don't know who would know the answer to that. I know they do have housing. You know, they had housing, um, uh, beautiful housing. Um, they used to do that. And I, I think they did that the last couple of years and, and further, as well as gardening. Yeah, they do the, we, we used to do the beautiful Battle Creek Awards when we were actually meeting yeah. in person, but that was, yeah. the city did not um, fund those activities. That was just funded by the private um, homeowner or business. And then they would be oh. um, nominated by the Neighborhood Planning Council. Gotcha. Um, but, you know, we have also, so there is an origami sculpture contest coming to Battle Creek this year that was put on hold from last year. Um, and then we have also explored, um, like, do we, uh, and, and Vice Mayor Ferris would know this too, we looked at like development standards in order to develop in a city, you have to put X amount of the investment into arts um, at the location. Um, but, you know, we, we, that hasn't, nothing like that has been introduced. We've just kind of been infusing it where we can or where we've identified partners um, you know, like the, the origami sculpture. And a lot of it's been donated. If you look at Takasaki Park, um, you know, some, some of that comes from donations. And then um, I agreed, the Battle Creek Community Foundation has partnered with us in beautification areas as well and art, bringing art. And, um, and I gotta give the chamber, Battle Creek Chamber credit for the fall into the arts and spring into the arts, which are always, as long as the weather's nice, a very popular, um, very popular event. You could always explore the possibility of having a dedicated millage just for arts. 
but that have to be approved by the people legislatively. So uh, all of this feedback is ideal for the result definitions we need. Um, I also wanted to highlight that that is so much of what you're talking about on the funding side is where priority-based budgeting fits in. It's how do you use your own resources uh, as best as possible? How might you partner uh, to still achieve the result, even if it's not directly from the city itself and ultimately dedicated revenue streams? Um, if, it, if you end up with results that you can't fund with the resource, the scarce resources that you have, what are your other opportunities? What are your levers? And that's kind of the spirit of, of everything we're doing here. And we have to start with what matters to you, which you've talked about, uh, and then work our way back towards um, the resource equation. We have, you've done remarkably well on time. And we have the biggest bear uh, next. So we compliment you and get you psyched up for the work uh, ahead, which is your three-way combination of physical appearance, environment, and community design. Um, so admittedly, this while the topic, uh, the result areas make sense to consider together, as you look at the definitions, perhaps we're seeing overlap. That's what we're going to be looking for your feedback on um, and opportunities to combine. We only have this result left, that's why we saved it, saved it for last, as well as governance, which is an internal result. And honestly, if we do not make it to the governance definition today, that's okay. Uh, it is the most consistent across communities. We're going to still try um, but I didn't want to shortchange you on discussion around this result area. So let's just dive right in. We had physical appearance, environment, and community design. I'll start on the physical appearance side. We had maintains overall community appearance, including cleanliness, offers garbage collection, offers recycling, provides code enforcement, including property maintenance, long grass, abandoned buildings, we had offers yard waste pickup and disposal, maintains public buildings and community facilities, offers attractive transportation corridors, streetscapes, entrance gateways. And then we move to environment, protects and conserves water and other natural resources, maintains utility infrastructure system for water, wastewater, and stormwater, supports air quality, ensures protection, conservation, and preservation of parks, open spaces, rivers, and other natural areas, practices energy efficiency and sustainability, educates about waste reduction, recycling, and conservation, and supports renewable and alternative energy sources. And finally, community design offers desirable quality neighborhoods, assists in the redevelopment and revitalization of parts of the community that need it, offers public places where people want to spend time, offers downtown or other areas with a strong sense of place, supports commercial development, protects and preserves historically significant buildings and sites, oversees overall quality of new development and existing redevelopment, collaborates to provide a variety of available affordable quality housing, supports residential development, manages growth in line with the city's master plan, and finally, preserves the community's character. This is Commissioner Herring. I feel like under environment in um, utilities, we touched on bullet one, protects and conserves water and other natural resources. Well, not, we did water and, we did water and utilities, and also bullet two. And um, where's the other one? It was so it was bullet one and bullet two were covered under utility. Great call. <laughs> if we could just have something that says, you know, we'll follow city's sustainability plan. Uh, for physical, Commissioner Morris, sorry. For physical appearance, I think that we could combine um, the garbage recycling and yard waste. 
And can those go under utility? It definitely Wh which could. ones? So it could garbage collection, recycling, and yard waste be part of our utilities? We had room in the utilities one for <laughs> that. Uh, are they uh, are, are they, they considered a utility? Well, Chris, to just from a logistical standpoint, we put that onto customer's utility bill. So it's often mm. referred to in Battle Creek as a utility because it's all billed. You know what I mean? Whether we, it's a, it's a traditional definition of utility, no. However, how we utilize it in Battle Creek, just for reference. That's great. That's a, we've noted the, the great suggestion and let us work with that to see if, as we're cleaning this one up and trying to get to the drill down to the spirit of environment, physical appearance, community design, um, if we can rearrange into utilities and it makes sense, we'll we'll try it. This is Commissioner Herring, also under community design. Um, when we talked about basic needs for the economy earlier, we could add in offers desirable quality neighborhoods because the quality of the neighbor of the housing that we put in is important as well. Also that would, we could also lump in residential development there as well, I think, because as you get the economy growing in Battle Creek and as you put in all these new businesses, you're gonna have to have new residential development. Great. So this might be a question about language and the difference between business development and commercial development, but it feels like supports commercial development and oversees overall quality of new development could be things that are incorporated into our the bullets we already agreed to in um, economy or in yeah. Good call. And also maybe preserves community character could be put in somewhere with our um, equity and inclusion part. As if we create a, communi a, care a, a community character that includes equity or that maintains equity inclusion. And I'm drawing a blank for the last one, equity inclusion. Uh, diversity? Yes. And could also renewable and alternative energy sources, could that go under utilities as well? That's in the environment at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And the, it practices energy efficiency and sustainability. Could we put that into utility? I'm not sure if that fits exactly. It certainly could. And the um, as a reminder, we also have the note that we're going to uh, give some consideration to another basic program attribute around environmentalism um, where some of these aspects will belong as well. Great comments. I uh, was, was like a yes and to what you just said. Okay. Fantastic. Um, we're in the we're definitely in the home stretch. Let's go ahead and I, I we have time and I would love to get your feedback on governance while we have it. Um, and then we'll do a wrap up and then give your brains a break. Okay, so uh, governance is our internal result. And 
if you think about it, this is how we evaluate in parallel all of the internal programs. If you think about processing payroll uh, or developing the budget um, or doing fleet maintenance, these are programs that don't, they're not offered directly to your residents. They are helping to keep the city of Battle Creek well governed in support of every other thing that you do. So that's the only shift to make in your thinking as you're considering uh, good governance and its definitions. Um, so we have uses good financial management practices, is honest, generally acts in the community's best interest, provides valuable services for taxes paid, is open and transparent to the public, is responsive, open, and transparent to the community, treats community members fairly and with respect, informs community about issues that affect them, follows regulations, policies, and safety measures for lower risk, hires a workforce focused on service excellence, offers community access to elected officials, plans for positive community future, collaborates with community stakeholders like private sector and nonprofits, and collaborates with other governments on regional issues. Commissioner Morris, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Commissioner Morris, um, I think that we could combine bullets two, five, and six. Um, is honest, I think could go to part of is open and transparent to the public. And I think that the public and community aspects of it should be one and the same too. Great suggestion. Commissioner Blood, thanks for typing yours into the chat as well. Another great suggestion. I think the last two bullets, just with collaboration being um, mm -hmm. a value of the, the cities. So collaborates with community stakeholders, private sector nonprofits, and other government um, on regional issues. I think there's some combining that could be done there. I would suggest combining three and five. Three and five. We got both of those on collaboration as well. You could also add seven into that three and five and treats community members fairly and with respect. Perfect. And that could also, the next one, informs community about issues that affects them. Wonderful. Rebecca, um, remind me uh, if I'm wrong or guide me, but do we have a citizen participation plan that can be utilized in this section somewhere? Yes, we do. I like all the references to transparency and providing information to the public, but I'm wondering if we could have something specific um, to accessing information from the city, um, not, not necessarily FOIA information, but um, um, having information that is easily accessed either. I, I don't know how we want to phrase it, because not just through our website, but in person, et cetera. Commissioner Ferris, I was thinking the same around accessibility and using that language, whether it be around information or access to staff. I think there's, could we look at the accessibility of the city as it relates to information, as it relates to elected officials, as it relates to staff? Great call.
governance. Going once, going twice, just kidding. Any other last comments on governance? The only other thing that I would say is, do we need something to the effect of like, we'll use best practice uh, outlined by Michigan Municipal League or I'd, uh, something to that effect. Um, we we have that we will collaborate with other governments. We have that we're going to um, use the best uh, fi financial management practices, but just like in general that will adhere to um, best practice. It's a great comment. Um, in addition, in the basic program attributes, there is a category called degree of mandate. And one of the subcategories includes, um, is it, so is it, is it mandated by the federal government, the state government? Is it something in your city charter? Is it recommended by a professional association um, and uh, industry best practice or standard? And that will be one other area where if I was a, a department in Battle Creek and I was trying to communicate to you that I'm providing a program in line with standards set forth by Michigan Municipal League, that's where I would definitely reference what you're saying. That totally works for me. Thanks, Chris. Sure. All right. We're down to three minutes. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 that's fine, Chris. This is actually kind of a wrap up question. So all of us commissioners have chimed in and I, I know that I'm really new and I'm trying to do my best in helping the community by being, you know, that liaison that kind of puts these together. But my question is how do we engage um, the department director, senior staff in utilizing their expertise and their years of um, experience in also, uh, you know, creating these definitions? How are staff a part of this process? Well, they certainly were a participants in the survey results themselves. Um, so that was open to all staff. We will now, again, we will work as a senior staff team to go back through all of the notes that we have. Um, and if we decide to, to offer up, um, you know, kind of staff input as a change, you know, to what we've been hearing tonight, we will certainly note that. So when you get a draft document, we will have vetted that through senior staff. Okay, and so this meeting here, is it, um, just so I'm clear, is it not an opportunity for senior staff to also participate? Is this just for the commissioners and it's something that you take this back to senior staff and gather input on later? Correct, take it back to senior staff and gather input on labor. They're just, it, it was a time, it's a time constraint, um, but also it's really important that we listen to, you know, all of the comments and we have our own chance to reflect on what we've heard um, as we kind of put the document together. Everybody, um, it, so we started with this, which is like beginning with the end in mind, uh, and we worked our way backwards to this celebratory conclusion slide. You, you did really wonderful and while we started with a, um, I'm happy that we took the time to make sure that we had the right result areas and you'll still get time to reflect and consider. Um, Brad and Eric and I, we definitely have our work cut out for us to uh, take consideration of your thoughtful feedback and notes, which was exactly what we had hoped that we would get today. So all of your feedback was spot on. And our next step is, uh, I will reword this. We're not coming back with finalized results and result definitions as in their final uh, draft. They're, they're a, a first draft of something succinct that you can review and we can make sure that we get uh, feedback on those. And we'll be working with Rebecca and her team to provide that first draft. Um, and we'll also follow up with you, Rebecca, on an anticipated timeline uh, to get that back so we can be clear with everybody and we will not let too much time pass. Um, but we'll, we'll be right back in touch on that, as well as uh, basic program attribute definitions for not only diversity, equity, and inclusion, but also our environmentalism 
uh, basic program attribute as well. And all of this will be used to influence the remainder of the priority-based budgeting process as departments um, ultimately will move into a program evaluation relating or aligning their programs to these results as you define them, which is followed by peer review, a program prioritization, uh, which all influences budgetary decisions. And we'll certainly be back to make sure that uh, you have a clear understanding of those next steps ahead of you. We're, we're one minute over. I want to be respectful of your time and just say thank you very much and uh, turn it back over to Rebecca for uh, any final comments and wrap up. Thanks. No, I'll be really quick because I know we also have to have public comment in there. So I'll turn that back over to the mayor. But we just wanted you to know that, you know, this is the beginning of process for staff. So, you know, we want to um, we will make sure that senior staff has input into that first draft version. Um, and then once we get to those finalized results and definitions, we will use that to begin the program scoring, the peer review process, the prioritization of programs and budget development for our, 20, our fiscal year 23 budget process. So please know this is like the beginning of our journey. Um, and for, from a staff perspective, we will now, um, we'll put that all together once we get the finalized document. So Mayor, I will turn it back over to you for public comment. Thank you, Rebecca, very much. And Sarah, do you have anyone in the queue? There is nobody here, Mayor. We are all set. All right. Are there any commission comments real quick? Just a follow-up question, Rebecca. So will there be a third session? So this sounds like it's still evolving and uh, and not set in stone. So will there be a third PBB workshop where we come in and then really just nail everything down and look at everything? Or is this going to be all independently via email? Um, it, you know, I certainly we can hold, I, I, I would like to get to that first draft, get that out to the commission and decide, you know, the commission can then advise us what, where do they see the next steps, if that is a workshop or questions that we can vet with the resource X team before we get to a more, you know, finalized version. So I, I, can't, I don't really have the answer. Um, I think that will um, evolve organically as we get, um, you know, kind of that first draft to the commissioners and, and make sure one, we have listened and, and recorded everything that you shared, um, make any adjustments that we see from the senior staff administration level, and then determine next steps together, if, if that makes sense. That does make sense. And, you know, I would love to hear input from senior staff. So if there are notes that they have or input or ideas um, that can be shared with us, I, I would love to to hear um, all of their valuable input as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other commission comments at this time? I'm not seeing any. I want to say thank you very much uh, for your participation. Um, this uh, workshop has ended. Thank you very much.